Yeah, uh, recently, a couple of days ago, matter of fact, Microsoft and Quantinium uh, announced a uh, kind of a neat breakthrough. Uh, error correction is one of the things we need to build bigger quantum computers because qubits are so error prone. Uh, they're very sensitive to the environment and radiation, you know, noise, just about anything you can think of. And we need a, a way to uh, do error correction in order to scale up. We need to scale up to, you know, millions and billions of, of uh, operations. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that now. And uh, logical qubits is kind of a, a, uh, a, a current, not a fad, but uh, it's kind of a current method of, uh, of controlling uh, qubit errors. Uh, and uh, Microsoft and Quantinium uh, developed a system that's uh, the logical qubits provide 800 times the error correction capability as the physical qubits do. Uh, physical qubits are built, you know, part of the hardware of the quantum computer. And uh, logical qubits are uh, groups of physical qubits, basically, uh, that uh, provide a more a better representation of uh, quantum information. Uh, and um, the logical qubits have got a method to uh, they've got a method to monitor what's going on with the logical qubits to determine you know what errors have been made and to be able to reset reset the uh, quant the logical qubits back to what they used to be. Uh, quantum is such a thing that uh, you can't clone quantum because of uh, the quantum law. There's a no cloning, basically no cloning law in quantum, not a legal law, but a, a theoretical uh, law that you can't clone a qubit. You try and clone it, you destroy it, destroy the information. In it. So this method with uh, uh, Microsoft and Quantinium looks like uh, uh, a pretty good methodology, and to extend it on out, uh, we can see some really uh, big gains in terms of uh, scaling qubits up. So, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Paul, when you when you move to a logical qubit, so this is I'm so ignorant. Um, when you move to logical qubits versus physical, what's the performance impact of that, or is there? What is the performance? Yeah, I mean. Um, well, I mean, if you don't have errors, you can, you know. No, I get that, but I mean, what what's the negative? What's the negative side to logical versus physical? Uh, it just takes a lot more. I mean, you know, you could take um, the in terms of logical qubits. There's uh, some methods that take take five physical qubits to make one logical qubit. There's some that take a couple of thousand. Uh, physical qubits to make a logical qubit. So the number of qubits uh, to be managed and that type of thing, you know. Okay. And it, it, I would ask you both, um, given, you know, the error rate for uh, qubits, please start calling me qubit because that sounds <laughs> like me. I'm distracted by sounds. I'm distracted by radiation and my surroundings, <laughs> and uh, I am very prone to errors. So yeah. thank you. It reminds me of Qbert, the uh, you're like video me, you're game. A logical qubit in the household with you. <laughs> That's called my wife. All yeah. right. <laughs> well, th this whole subject is way above my pay grade and my understanding, so I've <laughs> I've got really nothing to contribute. But it is fascinating, and uh, hey. Paul, it's always it's always interesting having these conversations around quantum. One more question, Paul. If they don't solve this error rate issue, does quantum ever find relevance in the real world? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, there's uh, problems that, a lot of problems that classical computers can't solve or that will take it uh, a few billion years to come up with a solution. Uh, there's a ton of problems. Uh, you know, some of the big ones are uh, climate change, uh, nitrates and and uh, be able to, to produce nitrates uh -huh. chemically, physically. Uh, I mean, there's, there's more problems than we can solve. So despite the error rate issue, 
um, qubit is or, or quantum is a is is it's it's coming. It, yeah, it's it's absolutely got a place. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we're doing planning for uh, uh, supercomputers with AI, uh, quantum, and HPC all working together. Uh, all these things be networked together, networking supercomputers together. So there's a world ahead of us. You need to do a quantum for dummies book. I'm telling you, I think this audience, and not that they're dummies, but it is a topic that like five people in the world know about. Um, yeah. We could, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that, that could that could really help, you know, from an education standpoint, you know, for sure. I mean, I think AI was that 10 years ago, right? And And now... Generative AI is sort of democratized and, you know, knowledge and, you know, even, you know, my wife was asking me about generative AI the other day and she's a, she's an optical or a retina um, scribe. So uh, it's, it's hit the mainstream.